So now let's take the previous example and do the same thing, but in a function. So it says write a function that multiplies the top left corner of an array by 2, the top right corner of an array by negative 3, the bottom left corner of an array by negative 4, the bottom right corner of an array by negative by 10. Assume the array has an even number of rows and an even number of columns. Notice this one is written slightly different. It's written from the sense that we use any generic array. So keep in mind, when you're writing a function, your, your code should work on any array, on any inputs. So that's why in the previous example, we wrote it in terms of variables so that it would automatically calculate which rows and which columns it needed. So whenever we're writing a function, there's a couple questions that we want to ask ourselves. So first thing, what do we want our function to do? Here's the code from the previous example. And it is the corrected code. I had some errors here, 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 and here uh, in the code that I showed you um, in the previous video, but that's okay. This is the corrected code. And this is what it looked like from the previous example, where we created an array and then modified it. But all of this was generic. It could work for any array. So in reality, this is what we want our function to do. We want it to modify any given array. So then we need to ask, what information do we need in order to do that? So we're talking about what do our inputs need to be? So if we look at this code, all of it depends on A. What is A? So that means A should be our input. Therefore, A equals our input. So that's our input. And then we're asking, what's the final result? What is my final calculation supposed to be? At the end of this code, my final calculation is A that's modified. So A, I need some matrix to start. And then I have some matrix that's modified. So that's how we kind of approach converting code that we've already written into a function. You can do it starting with um, going into the function right away, but I really encourage you guys when you're writing a function that's a little bit more complicated, start with an example like we did in the previous, previous video and modify it into a function. So for our function, we're gonna have the keyword function because we always start a function file with the keyword function. We're gonna have our outputs. So our output here in this example would be A, the name of our function. Um, in this example, there's nothing, there's nothing that says what I need to name my function, so I'll call it modify array. And what do my inputs need to be? My A matrix. You don't have to call them A and A. You can have two separate variables, and I'll show you that in the code. So then we're asking what goes inside of the function. It's this, literally this code. And then every function has an end. Generally, when we write functions, we also add in our comments. So here we have the h1 line, and here we define the use case, the inputs, and the outputs. But in reality, our code should work for any a value as long as it's valid. And in our inputs here in our documentation, we need to say what makes a valid a. And we know from up here, assume the array has an even number of rows and an even number of columns. That is our valid A. So if we look at the code for this, it might look something like this. So here I have the keyword function. I've named my output variable out. You can name it whatever you want. Here's the name of my function, here's my input. And here is my h1 line. So here I would say the name of the function, followed by a brief summary of what it does. So essentially I would write down uh, the description from the uh, document. The use case is literally how we're gonna call our function, which I'll talk about that in a minute. What are the inputs? So the inputs is in, it's an array with an even number of rows and an even number of columns. That's what defines our input. And the outputs is the modified the array, the modified array based on this description. You can get more descriptive here or you can get more descriptive here. And then all of this code is pretty much the same. The only difference is I'm changing my output variable, my out array, by placing values from my in array. So now instead of it being A and A, I have my output and my input. In order to manage that, I created outputs with just zeros the size of A. So I just pre-allocated what output should look like. And then I have my size function 
uh, for my in photo in. But other than that, it all looks the same. All of this code looks exactly the same. Let's go ahead and talk about calling using or testing a function. So you'll hear this terminology, call your function. Uh, it's the same thing as using your function, same thing as testing your function. There's a couple questions we ask in order to identify that. So first thing, what function are we using? What's the name of the function? We need that information. How many inputs does it have? What do those inputs need to be? For the function we're writing here, our input is just an array that has an even number of rows and even number of columns. Okay, so I need to generate what that? Generate my input. Uh, and then where do I want to store my output? So how many outputs does it have? What variables do I want to store my outputs in? Is it a whole variable, part of variable, which row, which columns? Essentially, we're talking about what goes on the left-hand side of my function call. So we're going to go ahead and go to MATLAB and look at this. So over here on uh, the command window, I have calling my function. So first things first, what's the name of the function? The function is modify array. So in order to call or, or use or test my modify array function, I need to define all of my inputs somewhere in my command window or in another script file. So it takes one input. That input is an array with an even number of rows and columns. So here I have created an array with an even number of rows and columns. This is exactly what we did over here when we generated what our A would be. Same thing. Rand I, 10, 4, 6. It doesn't matter what the values in A are. You can create it however you want, as long as it's an array with, same number, or with an even number of rows and an even number of columns. Then I'm going to call my function. So I'm going to type the name of my function and then give it my inputs. Once again, what variable stores your inputs? What do I want the input to be? I want the input to be this A array. Over here are my outputs. Where do I want to store my output? Is it all of a variable? Is it part of a variable? Here I'm just saying I want to change all of A. So store the answer of this code, the result of this code in A. Take the input and use these calculations with this A. So here you can see what the original A looked like, and here you can see what it modified to. Those don't have to be the same. We could say A is a random array, uh, six rows, two columns. And then I can say modify array, so I want my input to still be this array, but then I want to store my output in a second variable. So I want to store my output now in B. So those can be two different variables. But note, my function works on any A value. I could create a different one. I could say, I don't know, C equals rand I 10, um, six rows, eight columns. And then I can say output two equals modify array C. Any generic input, notice the names of my variables in my function are separate from the ones that I'm testing it with because it, it doesn't matter. Whatever C is here is gonna be the same as in, but they are two separate variables. Essentially what's in C is copied to in. Output to output. Those are two different variables. Whatever out ends up being at the end of this calculation, at this end, whenever I get to the end here of this function file, is gonna be copied into output to. So they store the same thing, but they are two separate variables. The values are copied from the inputs here to be used here. The values are copied from the outputs here to be used here. But we can't run a function file. We need to go ahead and test it. We need to call our functions. You can do it in the command window. You can do it in another script file. But that's how we're going to test slash use slash call our function.